Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Health seems to be a big issue. I mean, we've had to deal with it pretty much from the dawn of time, and uh, IT's role in health is becoming increasingly important as we talk about uh, more of our health being tied into, uh, I guess, well, places that we can't necessarily see, but we can now get access to, correct? Yes. Like, this is a big, big, well, I'd say burgeoning field, potentially. It's, it's a huge field. It's actually really interesting because there's a perfect storm in healthcare right now. And the government has driven a lot of it through uh, the incentives that came from the enormous stimulus package, that type of stuff. Within that, there's a high tech act that puts all the incentives and penalties in place for adoption of electronic health records. So it's really one of the last industries that has not gone through that IT transformation. So there are jokes about Jiffy Lube being able to capture all your uh, customer information and hospitals can't. So the industry is absolutely going through that transformation right now and it'll be probably through 2015, 2016. Now when you say perfect storm, what elements constitute that? Well, there's uh, obviously there's a lot going on. There's kind of three, uh, three legs to the stool. So one of them is the electronic health records. There are significant incentive dollars at stake. So some health systems can get 100 million plus dollars in incentives in place if they do it according to the way the federal government wants. Uh, penalties can be much bigger than that if they don't get to that point. Um, so the electronic health records are there. Uh, everybody knows about healthcare reform law in place now. Somewhat. I mean, I, I know as a consumer and right. someone who does have health insurance. So healthcare insurance or providers, they all have to study what's going on with the law to understand how they need to reshape their business. So some of it is just business, some of it is IT related, things they need to adapt to to be more successful in the new healthcare landscape. And the third one is there's a huge thing coming called ICD-10, and that's uh, federally mandated to occur by October 2013. And all, all that means is- Yeah, so you, you, so, you gotta explain this to so, me. So if you go in and you hurt your left wrist, there's a code that they put in there saying, okay, it looks like Eric hurt his left wrist. And there's a certain number, number combination in there that will track you through when you go in as a patient to when you receive your ultimate bill from the healthcare insurance company. So essentially, that's version nine, these sets of codes that you see, and the rest of the world is on version 10. So ICD stands for International Classification of Diseases, 10 is for 10th version, but it's a hugely complex endeavor because it's going from roughly 20,000 combinations of codes to about 200,000. Wow. So in the past, instead of saying, well, Eric hurt his wrist, they can break it down and say, well, Eric hurt his left wrist, and it looks like it's the uh, ulna you know, that type, of, that type of granularity that we haven't had before. So then what is IT's role in helping the healthcare industry get to where it needs to be? Getting an enterprise-wide electronic health record system in place. So in the forefront, that's pretty simple and straightforward, right? They're capturing all your patient information. So they're figuring out if you're allergic to penicillin, surgeries that you've had, all those types of interactions. Uh, but as that evolves, they're gonna take all the information they're collecting start to do business intelligence and analysis and all that type of stuff with it to figure out that, hey, this guy had a heart attack in New Hampshire, this guy had a heart attack in Dallas, they're about the same demographic, which treatment worked better for him, which was more cost effective. Would I be able to get access to those records if I say move or if I'm in a different location? Would this bring us closer to that type of access of information? That's a really good question. I, I think that's where it's heading. There's not a lot of it now, but some of the more forward thinking companies are Figure out, figuring out ways to segment what needs to stay private and what wouldn't be public, publicly available. But a lot of websites now or hospitals will have initiatives where you can, as a patient, log, use your username and password, get in, look at the type of stuff you need to. Maybe it's a basic thing and say, I need to check and see what my balance looks like or I need to see schedule an appointment, some of those basic type of things, those evolve over time. I guess I'm spoiled. I have health insurance here uh, and uh, I'm able to log in and get access to all my records uh, down to knowing how much I weighed when they took that measurement, you know, four years ago. And we, I gotta tell you, from a patient's perspective, that's really nice yeah. to know that I've, I've given that information up. And like I said, maybe I am spoiled. Is, is this something that, you know, I guess the IT sector is helping in a larger sense bring to more consumers, more patients? Absolutely, and I think it's critical. You know, so if I go to the doctor and I ask somebody how much a CAT scan is gonna cost me to see if my sinuses are okay, nobody knows. There's no other industry like that where you have no idea how much something is gonna cost and how much you're gonna be on the hook for. So I think 
if you can empower the patient more with that type of information, we as patients or consumers can make a lot smarter decisions about things. So what might, uh, you know, someone who is considering making a hire, uh, what might they keep in mind uh, for a professional uh, in terms of their skill set? What is going to be more adaptable to the healthcare industry versus maybe other industries in the field? Right now, most providers are stuck with the mindset that they're looking for people with very vendor specific application experience. So just like in you might hire a Microsoft guy or you might hire a Unix, uh, Unix person. It's a little like that in that they don't necessarily cross over. People have that background and they stay in that, in that track. So healthcare is pretty similar. There are packages you might not have heard of like Epic or Cerner, things like that are the big boys in the industry. Um, and right now, most providers are hiring people with that specific experience. I think over time, they're gonna have to expand that to understand that look, an A player from the financial industry or from manufacturing may be great for us. They just need to have those soft skills like great communication skills, uh, great aptitude, learning ability, that type of stuff. Are they finding more uh, situations where they have to combine uh, what would be two separate worlds to effectively get a new world? Essentially what's happening in most systems, there are some that are trying to tie that together with a portal strategy or integration of different systems. But for the most part, the activity that we're seeing is going towards a single source vendor. So enterprise wide type of thing. So you may see a hospital rip out what they have in place and put something entirely new in place because they feel that package can cover the whole hospital system. And you may see others build on what they already have, but it's becoming more rare to see hospitals that have stuff in their clinic setting, stuff in their inpatient setting, or they have three or four different vendors tying it all together. It's just become too complex for that. What do you imagine is going to happen after, say we get past this incentive period uh, well, I, after yeah, the trans yeah, after exactly, say yeah. after the transformation yep. say would have happened in, in a variety of, of uh, locations I think be? what's going to happen is you're going to see more of those general IT workers that want to get into healthcare IT have the opportunity to because right now as you can imagine there's a lot of inflation in healthcare IT specialized worker rates so there are plenty of really qualified people out there that might be interested in the role at a significantly reduced salary position that type of stuff so I think in a few years, there'd be a real influx of people from other industries, both to cover that lower cost demand, as well as helping out with the shortage of healthcare IT workers. Well, if this wasn't a hot industry today, it sounds like this would be, if you're a betting person putting your chips on uh, healthcare for a growth opportunity in IT. A absolutely, and it should be that way. Most experts think it's gonna be that way through at least 2016, 2017, because the penalties are so enormous for non-compliance that there's going to be a lot of hot activity through then at least. So do you see potentially a lot more acquisitions happening in the coming years, specifically when these deadlines approach and uh, companies have not adapted to these changes? This recession has been so bad that it's the first time it's really impacted the healthcare sector for the, I think, the first time. Oh, really? So in, people in what usually, way? Like uh, Just in general. So uh, you have less patients coming in the door because you might be less willing to spend money out of your own pocket, even if it's only a deductible. Uh, there are less people that are carrying health care insurance because the unemployment rate is higher. So it definitely has impacted the healthcare sector. And I think the healthcare industry has always been thought of as a recession proof type of industry. And a lot of places suffered along with everybody else for the last few years. And if you had any advice to give to someone who was interested in possibly pursuing a career uh, with IT in the healthcare industry, what would you say? Perfect question. I get asked that all the time. I think the most important thing is to treat it just like you would as if you were a fresh college graduate coming out of college looking for your first job. You've got to be hungry. You've got to, I think the best advice is to take a generalized IT position that may not be as specific to the clinical or healthcare kind of flavor IT. Get your foot in the door, prove your worth, and then find your way to slide into another group and expand your skills there. Sounds like a, a healthy way of going. Yeah.